Hi everybody. Um, as you know, I'm an advertising photographer, or I was. And before Photoshop, we had uh, some very difficult jobs to do, and this is one. Now it's a bit long-winded, and I haven't got an awful lot of photographs to show on it. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. Now it's an Audi ad that I had to do. I was briefed on a Friday night, uh, no, on a Friday lunchtime. I mustn't exaggerate. Uh, Friday lunchtime, and they had to be delivered on the Monday morning with no retouching at all. And it really was quite a difficult project. So I hope you enjoy it. Well, here it is. Here's the final ad. Um, now, it was a bit with uh, trepidation that I went to the client be before the shoot because he said to me he's got a very difficult shot that had to be done by Monday. Um, well, I was used to that. But anyway, when he showed me the layout, which is basically a drawing of what uh, you see in front of you, um, I wasn't quite as confident. I mean, normally would have a lovely smile and go, oh yes, okay, that's fine. Um, but then uh, I had to give a quote on the spot. Um, well, I asked for a three-day fee plus the technical costs um, if, it, if we weren't successful. And a much bigger fee to be paid if all went well because the risks uh, involved were enormous. Now what I must point out is when I'm talking about risks is the risk of losing a client. Um, and of course one art director talks to another um, and I don't want to be involved with the disaster. Well, we decided to shoot it on a 10 by 8 film because that's what we always used at the time. One of those big cameras where you put a, head over your, uh, a hood over your head um, so you can see through the camera and everything's upside down, of course. But anyway, that was the studio camera, 10 by 8 Sinar. And what we would do is put a 5.4 back on it to do little Polaroids, etc. So what I have got left of this shot, you'll see. Um, now, what else did we do? Hang on a second. Uh, oh yeah, we shot it with flash. We had to. Now, to fill a studio um, with flash, it was about 60,000 watt seconds of flash. So I had to borrow it from all my friends and rent it, etc, etc. So anyway, we get on. We shot it in my studio. Right, we normally get two cars in to shoot. So we had the space. And this is how we did it. Well, the first thing to do, of course, is, uh, because you see it's on water, obviously, um, is to lay out an enormous black piece of plastic on the studio floor. Now, sounds easy, doesn't it? But, I mean, anyway, you've got to find it on Friday afternoon. You've got to find something that's, what, eight or nine metres uh, in depth and uh, probably four or five metres in width. Uh, you've got to then get the car on it. And one of the complications putting the car on it is not to rip it, but also you have to raise the car up a fraction. And you raise the car up by putting little blocks under it. So you have to jack the car up and make sure you don't split the black material or black plastic, otherwise you get a leak. Um, so anyway, once that's done and you've got about so four centimetres um, of wood under each car, you fill, you lift the sides obviously to close it like a little swimming pool, and you fill it with water. Now, the reason of raising the car is if I change angle for some reason at the last minute and I see a wheel, of course the wheel's got to be at the height of the water. So anyway, we raise the water just up to this touching a tyre. And then you've got the problem that of course you can see the black plastic through the water. So you have to dye the water black. And that's the best way, whoop, drop a bit of paper. Um, that's the best way of, of making it so you can't see the ground underneath. It just means that when you've got your assistants walking in it, they get black feet up to about their ankles. So, but it doesn't matter, they're only assistants. Um, so let's move on to the next step. So now it's down to lighting. Now the lighting, I, would, I used my standard lighting, which was bouncing the light off uh, the studio. Now the studio is a special studio like a bit like the inside of an eggshell so no corners so you, you could throw light bounce light off uh, the walls back onto the car because if you put a light straight onto a car you get the problem of specular highlights or these these big highlights that hit the chrome or the metal and it never looks like it never looks nice anyway so always indirect light on a car 
Well, that's me anyway, that's my style. Now, the next problem, of course, is the four drips. Now, we've got to find a technique of making those four drips. Well, two problems, they've got to fall exactly at the same time, and I've got to press the button at exactly the right time as well. Um, so, let's have a think about it. We thought about uh, drip feeds, we tried that, of course what happens you couldn't get them falling at the same time. Uh, we tried several systems, but we ended up trying four little taps, as you see in this picture. Well, I mean, that didn't work, we didn't get them right, we had to, the spacing was wrong. You can imagine how long this went on, trying to get it right. Well, I was ready for a dose of Valium. And in fact, a syringe full of Valium would have done it. And then I thought, syringes. Now that might be a good solution because if we're clever, we mount the four syringes uh, next to each other, exactly the right distance apart. And then once they're stable, I would, could load uh, the bottom with another syringe with a drip. And the drip would stay there. Now, if you add water, if you add, sorry, sugar to the water, um, it becomes a little thicker. Um, and if you add a bit of salt to that as well, it becomes even thicker. So you can get a nice drip sitting there. And I just need a, an assistant with a very steady hand to load every syringe with a drip. And then all he's got to do is tap the bar that's holding the syringes and all the four drops will drop. So we'll get nice drips dropping at just the right time. Well I was full of enthusiasm now because I thought we have got the answer. So anyway we did a nice picture, it looked pretty good to me but I've forgotten one thing, <laughs> the client was going to come. Uh, so the client popped into the studio, the art director, and art directors are already, I mean normally they're friends of yours so there's no big problem. Um, well, he looked at the picture and he said, oh yeah, that's great. Um, and at that moment he said, um, I thought, oh no, he's got a problem with it. So it became, um, but don't you think the water's a bit flat around all the drips or the, the little circles? And of course he was right. It looked a bit like the, the rings were made out of plastic on a big plastic sheet. Um, so we had to solve another problem now, is how we could create some waves around, uh, around those rings. So what this meant really was that I had somehow to create these waves and the best way of doing it was to get someone to stir the water a little bit before we drop the drops, but not too much, it just had to be the right amount. Well we tried that, <laughs> we thought that was going to work fine, stirring the water. Nice little waves, wait till the waves go down a bit, tap the syringes and the four drops drop. Um, but what I'd forgotten is that as the water was stirred, you withdraw your piece of wood and it creates a fifth drip. And now you've got five drips. So I had to think, how are we going to stop that fifth drop? He's stirring the water with a broomstick Brings it out, drop drops, fifth drop. So, how can we stop that happening? Well, this is when I came up with my drop eater. Get a tube of cardboard. Inside the tube of cardboard, we put a towel. We've got a nice tight fit for the broomstick. So, at the moment that he drew the broomstick out of the water, he would in fact draw it up the tube and the drip would be eaten by the towel. Now that worked beautifully. So now we come to the sequence of events. We've got everything set, we've sorted out the light, uh, we've done our final tests, uh, we processed the film ourselves in the studio so that made that look pretty easy. Um, so the sequence of events is this. The assistant charges or loads each little needle with a beautiful drop, but just on the edge of dropping. Then another assistant stirs the water very carefully, creating some nice little waves. And then I say, go! And another assistant, bang, 
hits the bar, the four drops drop, and I go bang, just at the right time. Now, <laughs> you can imagine how long that took, but I did it in 10 goes, which was pretty good. So the client came, looked at the photograph, he said, yes, that's exactly what I want. Um, but could you do it with the headlamps on, the car wet, uh, the car dry with the headlamps off and on, the car wet with the headlamps on. In the end, we had eight different alternatives of this shot to do. I was going absolutely mad. We shot 200 sheets of 10 by 8 film. We got through about five boxes of 10 by 8 Polaroid, four boxes of 5 by 4 Polaroid. The total film bill was over £5,000 just for processing film, etc. So I was very happy on the Monday morning to go out and get absolutely, well, you can imagine. <laughs> well, as you can imagine, a great relief to finish that. Now this is the final shot, got to show you that. Uh, again, I've got to apologize. It's a 5.4 version. Uh, we used to do, to save film, we used to do 5.4, um, bits of an image, we just take a 5.4 back and put it on the 10.8 camera, so we just shoot the centre of the image, um, just as a test. Uh, so this is one of those tests I can't find anywhere, an original 10.8, but anyway, um, this is the best we did, and I hope you uh, think that's a very good result. So don't forget to subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed that film. I certainly didn't enjoy making taking a picture, uh, and I hope to see you soon. Cheers.